Now, the fact is, for the Hong Kong government, it's never proactively sought to protect the um, asylum seekers' rights at all. Into about 2004, um, basically, our firm um, was representing a, um, an asylum seeker who was rejected by the UNHCR and was about to be sent back to Sri Lanka. And uh, we saw him, saw his evidence, and thought that it was, he has, he definitely has a fear of torture and brought this case to the government. And as a result of this judicial review, which went all the way to the Court of Final Appeal, the case is called Prabhaka, um, the court started to assess um, torture claims. Because at the time, I mean, we talked about refugee convention. Hong Kong government's not a signatory. However, it is a signatory to the Convention Against Torture. Hence, it was possible for us to raise a legal argument that that man, that Sri Lankan man, should stay here to be screened by the Hong Kong government under the Convention Against Torture. So that's when the whole torture scheme started in 2006. Oh, no, sorry, 2004. Now, since that time, then we tried to deal with other issues. Now, there, uh, from, from then on, there were more asylum seekers who were aware that actually you can make torture claims in Hong Kong, and so they, they started making such claims. Now, then we had to face with a problem of, well, the government's assessing their cases, but they're not coming to any results. And meanwhile, they're all starving and sleeping outside Scott Ferry. So we took another case to court um, because the government wasn't going to offer to them free social welfare. And we had to fight for it. There was no other option. So we took the government to the court, um, the director of social welfare. And um, it was during um, the court case that the government actually conceded and started a scheme through the um, international social, social services to provide welfare to asylum seekers. Now, after that, um, we, were, we were then looking at how the torture claim screening process was working. And up until, I think, about 2007, and even 2000, 2000, 2008, there was not one single successful torture claimant. So the scheme has started, if you remember, from 2004 to 2007, and there's not one single successful claimant. So we thought, okay, there must be serious problems with it, and we looked at the procedures and found that it was extremely unfair. We took a case of FB to the court, and as a result of this case, the system that has gone on from 2004 to 2009 was held to be unlawful and had to stop. Uh, the government went through a year of revising its procedures and end of 2009 started a new, what they called the enhanced screening system, which is actually a new system. Um, they started screening torture claims again. Now, interestingly, it was actually during the case of FB, while we were in court, that the government offered um, one of the claimants um, protection under the Convention Against Torture. That was the only one person who's ever gotten this protection um, since 2004 up until today. Um, so basically what I'm trying to demonstrate to you is a pattern of the government being completely reluctant. Um, the government's never proactive in offering any rights or any protection to asylum seekers. Every single time we want to protect anybody's rights or move any of um, these or advocate or, or move um, the legal situation forward in their favor, we have to bring judicial reviews. Um, this is, you know, I, I guess I like to respond a little bit to what Elita mentioned right at the beginning. I mean, yes, we have to come together as one voice. Yes, we have to advocate. Um, and and I, I believe in that as well. However, at the same time, we're really having to recognize the fact that the Hong Kong population is against us. The Hong Kong government's against us. Hong Kong government's not going to suddenly become proactive and nice to the refugee population. And so the advocacy um, outside courts can only go so far. Um, I would basically, some, um, basically make the position that based on our experience since years, I mean 2004, up until now and foreseeing the future since CY Lung's just um, come into this position and there are various rumors about what sort of position he would take, that the situation wouldn't really improve. And the only way to move 
um, or, or advocate for the rights of our clients, asylum seekers, is to actually continue to bring these judicial reviews.